So, after you calculate the fitness of all your organisms, you sum them all together to find the total. And here we are looking at this picture. We have 10 organisms in this generation for demonstration purposes. So we calculate the total sum of all of the fitness functions. And then we uh, designate on the number line regions uh, assigned to each organism. We draw a random number from 0 to the total, between 0 and the total. So, for example, if the total happens to be exactly 10, we choose a random number between 0 and 10. If it turns out to be, say, 6.5, that comes to about here. And so we select organism 6 to be that parent. For the other parent, we draw another random number. If we happen to get, say, 7, and it also falls in organism 6, we reject that because we need two distinct parents. So we draw again. This time, say, we get 9.8. And we're way over here. We choose organism 10. That's the second parent. And these two will be selected for breeding. So very straightforward. But the stochasticness of this process is very important. OK. So now we have parents. And now the magic happens. We produce offspring. The first step is uh, crossover. So this is, as we mentioned in the opening, the defining characteristic of genetic algorithms. There are many other evolutionary algorithms, but genetic algorithms mean specifically we have crossover. So we take two chromosomes, two arrays of binary numbers, in our case. We, these two chromosomes love each other very much, and on the other side we have a mix of the two chromosomes. So the child will be one of these. Say the chromosome from the red one, then the chromosome of the blue one, then the chromosome of the red one again. So crossover is simply that, the switching of a chromosome between two parents to produce offspring. There are many options you can use. Uh, this particular picture demonstrates uh, two-point crossover. You can equally do one-point crossover, where you have just one point. You have red here, and then blue for the rest, and blue and red for the rest. Or you can do uniform crossover, where at each bit you have a small probability of crossing over to the other one, and then crossing over back, and then go for a while, crossover back. There are many options. And this is a good time to discuss the nature of genetic algorithms more generally. Genetic algorithms are an empirical, an empirically based strategy. The convergence of genetic algorithms around an optimal solution is very poorly understood. Uh, as I understand it, there are no theorems that uh, can prove convergence of the algorithm to an optimal solution, uh, or prove convergence to any solution, to any local optimum. Uh, I have not seen any such proofs, and even uh, read in the literature that this is one of the major criticisms of genetic algorithms. However, using them empirically, we find that they work fantastically well. So, it comes down to what works. You can try different things and see what works, at the end, we'll have recommendations. But now let's consider, OK, what would be a reasonable choice? Why does crossover work? Why does it help? And this actually does have some mathematical rigor behind it as to why crossover can improve an algorithm. The key word is schema. A schema is a block of DNA, a section of chromosome, that taken together, if you get that section to be a good fit, then if you try mixing that section of DNA with other chromosomes, then that can improve the speed with which your algorithm converges. So in our DNA, for example, we have base temperature, max temperature, x position, y position, lambda. So as I look at this, I see two basic blocks of DNA that I think go together. So we have the temperature region, and we have the position region. And if, for, by chance, we get a fantastically good location, like position information here, then 
we want to be able to preserve that through the generations, to give that to multiple children while changing the temperature section of the chromosome, which is exactly this process. Preserve the location, change the temperature. So it has been proven that that crossover can improve the algorithm under such circumstances where a block of DNA taken together it is usefully preserved across generations. Which returns us to the comment I made on the encoding slide, which is the order in which you list your parameters is very important. If we were to choose to do base temperature, then the X position, then the max temperature, then the Y position, then the standard deviation, we would lose all benefit of this crossover step. Because the chromosome is random, having crossover to preserve stretches of chromosome is completely useless. I think we automatically do this just when we type things into the computer we automatically do oh yeah well the temperatures together and the positions together but that is something to actually pay attention to and make sure you are doing intentionally due to this crossover step. So also we have mutation. Mutation is as important or more important than crossover. If, if you were to not have any mutation at all, then whatever you chose randomly for your first generation is the only portion of the search space you will ever get to. You cannot cross over your way to new places in the search space or to every place in the search space. Mutation is the key. So again, there are many options of how to mutate, um, but usually the option is chosen for you based on your encoding scheme. So since we have the have chosen a binary representation, mutation is easy. You go through with a small probability and change ones to zeros and vice versa. Next, elitism. Yes, elitism is a technical term in this algorithm, and it's a very important part. If you think about the, the algorithm as I've presented it so far, each generation, you are completely throwing away the old generation, including your best solution. It didn't take very long for people to look at this and say, well, that's stupid. Why don't we just save the best solution? So that's exactly it. Elitism is simply choosing your best uh, solution, saving that chromosome somewhere separate, then performing all of your crossover, mutation, parent selection. You will use your best solution as a parent. Um, you certainly hope to use it as a parent to generate similar organisms. But at the end, after you do all of the crossover mutation for everything, you simply paste the best solution back in uh, in order to make sure you do not get worse solutions over time. Uh, now, stopping criteria. Uh, there are a few relatively standard stopping criteria you can, ch you can choose. When is the algorithm complete? It is an important question. So here are some options. First, a specified tolerance threshold is achieved. If you have a, a problem that has a very specific goal, a very specific threshold of acceptability, and then after that threshold there's no real gain to getting anything better, then as soon as you hit that threshold you can stop. Done. Alternatively, you can do a specified number of generations. That's what I did for the demonstration code we'll look at soon. Um, you can go a specified amount of computational time, if that is a limiting factor. Or you can go until the solution fitness has plateaued. A very intuitively easy concept, a, a bit more complicated to implement, because you have to decide how long of a plateau is a plateau, and how flat is flat, but it can be done. So. Um, before we go off to look at the actual example code, uh, let's look at a few recommendations. So this is an empirical algorithm, as I mentioned. So there are no hard and fast mathematical criteria for which this will converge. There are simply recommendations. 